you know what? I wanted to like this film. I actually watched it twice to make sure I was still disliking it. And yeah, I could not bring myself to like it, despite it having two really good actors in it. Serena is yet another movie that tries to cash in on Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence because they're two rising stars and they've been in quite a few movies together. But what exactly is Serena about? That's very hard to say. See, the thing about Serena is that not a lot happens and a lot of random stuff happens around it and it's hard to give you the clear message on what this movie's trying to be about unless I give away two-thirds of the movie. So to try not to give too much away because if you really want to see this movie uh, yeah I don't want to give it away for you let's just say Bradley Cooper runs a lumber company and they tear down trees but things really aren't going so well there's a lot of accidents there's a lot of people that just can't do it. And so he discovers Jennifer Lawrence, who had a family that used to run a logging company. But through certain circumstances, she's the only one left in her family. And now Bradley Cooper is like, okay, let's make you my partner and my wife. And there we go. And as they try to run the logging company and try to mend this weird marriage, many different problems occur that they have to overcome and one of them might just go a little bit too crazy. Okay, what good things can I say about Serena? Well, it is absolutely beautifully shot. The costumes, the set design, the camera, the lighting, everything looks perfect. Acting is pretty decent, but with our main actors, despite them being really good actors, they give quite a bit of mixed performance throughout this entire film. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're just okay, sometimes they're just plain bad. And there are a few scenes here and there that are expertly crafted from the camera work, from the point of view, from how the whole scene is set up. There's a lot of craft in certain parts of this movie. The problem is the entire rest of the film is pretty darn messy. Now, like I said, our main actors, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, their performances are a little mixed. Like I said, there are some great moments in their acting, but ultimately there's a lot of bad moments that just sort of just, eh. One thing that did become obvious is that Bradley Cooper has an accent through some moments in the movie. He tries to do that 20s sort of fast talker, but there's a weird sound. He does a weird sound with his voice that makes it feel like that, but then sometimes he just talks completely normal, just like you'd expect Bradley Cooper to talk. And so he doesn't really keep that accent throughout the entire film. Now, the times when characters have accidents and these horrible, brutal, violent moments happen throughout the movie, they're really good, very horrific, and just really... I think most of it is practical effects, and it's really great. Oh, and the chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence, you'd think they'd have it, especially after Silver Linings Playbook. They were both great together in that movie. In this movie, it almost kind of reminded me of... Anakin Skywalker and Padme from the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, just not as bad as that, but it did remind me quite a bit. It's one of those movies where you don't feel like they love each other, and so they have to continually say that they love each other for us as the audience to sort of get it, and that's not good for a romance type movie. And even with them constantly saying I love you to each other, it is hard to fathom that they do love each other because we don't get a lot of development with their relationship. Here's the first scene they meet, and I'm not joking about this, this is act the actual scene. And if you have Netflix and it's available for you, go ahead and check it out, I am not lying. So the first scene that Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence meet, well Bradley Cooper sees her from afar, knows her backstory from his sister, and then she's riding on a horse, he rides after her on a horse. 
she notices him following her, following her and so she turns around she stops she's like why are you following me why are you following me and who are you he tells her his name and then suddenly he says we should get married she laughs in his face rides off he rides after her and the very next scene they're married I kid you not they are married in the next scene that's what this movie is like the first 10 to 20 minutes well most of the movie is a mess but the first 10 to 20 minutes is an absolute mess the worst I I do understand that this movie takes place over years and so it has to get fast and go through it quickly as possible but at the same time it doesn't in a way that's just so messy and just feels like there's so much missing for us to understand the development of the characters understand the plot understand the story and understand everything it's just let's give you what you need to know and that's it but then it you don't know enough to actually care about the characters oh and when i saw krampus and i saw the first scene in the movie i thought okay this is the exact tone of the movie this is what the movie's going for i totally get this movie with serena not at all the first scene is literally showing the forest and just how beautiful it is it's sunrise and bradley cooper is on the porch he's looking out he's got a blanket over his shoulders then it shows the forest uh, overview of the forest then the title comes up that's the opening scene that's it that's all we get I guess it kind of does match the movie though. Something that looks beautiful with a lot of nothing in the movie. I guess it does fit. And when I say there's nothing in the movie, that's a little hard to say because there is stuff in the movie. There's things that happen, but it feels so random even though there is a bit of a flow to it. It's so bizarre. There's also a lot of awkward moments with Jennifer Lawrence's character in this movie where it's shots, really close-up shots, of just her face, and she's really monotone. Well, it's not like... She has an expression on her face, but it never changes, and it's just set on her face for several long seconds. And it's just... Okay? Can you can you do the next scene? Can, can we skip over this? Come, come on, cut. Cut, on to the next scene. Oh, no, no, okay, still still staring still creepily staring okay now it's done okay okay and the problem is there is thing like i said there is things happening there is conflicts and things that they have to overcome but at the same time it feels like the main story the main reason this movie exists isn't until the last part of the second of the two-thirds of the movie like the last bit of the two-thirds and then the last third of the movie that's where it feels like, okay, it's finally picked up. This is what this movie all led to. Actually, come to think of it, there's another little piece that reminded me of Anakin Skywalker and Padme. Um, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence feels like the Anakin in this movie, where she turns to the dark side. Yeah, she, she definitely turns to the dark side. That's, that, that's for sure. Also, I found the characters really unlikable, and maybe that's kind of what it was meant to be. Maybe? Maybe I'm giving the film a little too much credit, because it feels like the kind of people that get everything that they want, and they just want more. There's a lot of jealousy, a lot of greed in this movie, and it's on things that you wouldn't expect. Also, I found it odd when certain characters knew things that they couldn't possibly have known, but we as the audience know, and it's almost like they know what the audience knows, even though they shouldn't. There's a few moments like that. Oh, and one of the extra things Bradley Cooper's character is obsessed with is finding a panther in the North America. Yes, they actually do exist, though. I finally looked it up, and they kind of basically look like cougars. And, yeah. So I guess it's not crazy after all. I thought it was crazy and I thought it was laughable throughout the whole movie. Because I was thinking Black Panthers from Jungles and South America and all that stuff. This is just one of those odd movies to review because the, it looks great. There's a lot of great things to it. There's scenes that work well. But the story and the characters, there's a messiness to it that make it a boring movie to watch. So I'm going to give Serena 
one star. So have you seen Serena? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment. And as always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was just my opinion.